Hello everybody. Bernie Sanders has come out. I think it's been, what is it, half a month, about a month or so? He's come out and he said that he wants to become the labor secretary or the, the secretary of labor is the technical term. Huh. Wonder what that would be like. Well, I mean, for example, we know that Secretary of Labor has control over over a hundred <laughs> control over 180 laws and thousands of regulations. What are some things that he would fight for? Well, most of us already know this. I'm just going to recap this for another five seconds for those of you who do not know. So, for example, more pay time sick off. Oh, I actually have my little notes here. Let's see here. Aid family and medical leave, increased protections for uni un blah, 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 unionized workers. Jesus. Bear with me, this is what happens when you decide to film at night after working all day. Additional leave for workers who are struggling to care for members of their family due to COVID-19, as well as an increased minimum wage. Now I'm gonna, I could get into the, the specific details for you guys about what exactly would he change, but I think a lot of times, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think a lot of times people get pretty bogged down and bored with the statistics. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna personalize this and create this into kind of an interesting story. So I worked at Amazon. Bernie Sanders created the, <laughs> the Stop Bezos Act. The idea of the act was to stop large corporations like Amazon and Walmart. Those were like the two poster child kind of examples. Stop them from taking advantage of workers who oftentimes are on food stamps. Most of Amazon's employees are on food stamps. So then Mr. Bernard Sanders what he was arguing was, okay, if they're on food stamps, then let's go ahead and let's deduct however much they're getting from food stamps from Amazon. We're gonna tax Amazon the amount that they're getting food stubs, stamps, food stamps. Or you can increase the minimum wage to $15. Now, working at Amazon, that's a big deal because originally we were getting paid, I think it was about $10 or so an hour in Oregon, something along those lines. Right off the bat, when I was having these conversations with people I used to work at Amazon with, one of the main conversations was, well, hold on a second here. Amazon, as kind of an FU to the system, they decided to take away their perks for working hard. So for example, there's a situation where if you're on Amazon and you were saying getting paid $10 an hour, if you work over a certain rate of productivity, so for example, the productivity of a bar is set here and you work yay much over, you get paid additionally. So sometimes even though if the minimum wage is $10, you might get paid say $17 an hour. And so their, their counter to me was, if, if that exists, excuse me, because it exists with the $15 minimum wage an hour at Amazon, they took away the perks. So we're actually losing money at the end of the day. Fair point, fair point. But something that I realized at Amazon was that a majority of people were injured. For example, I busted my feet, both of them, really bad. I needed surgery, double foot surgery. My question is, are most of the people there going to meet the uh, hyper productivity line in order to get an increase in pay? Now you could say all day, well, they're just lazy if they don't do it. Most of the people are actually injured there. One question that might come up is why don't they get workers comp? Well, <laughs> I swear on my life on this. Amazon told most of us point blankly, Amazon does not promote injured people. Yes, yes, yes. They actually told us that. You're working with an injury because if your career's on the line at Amazon, you don't want to lose your career as a result of the energy, excuse me, injury. So most of the time they would fight through the injury. And a lot of times as injuries do, they get worse and worse and worse. And a lot of times what they would do is their injury would get so bad to where the management would recognize that that's something that they're not going to be able to overcome. And they actually increase work expectations for that individual person because it's not unionized and they fire people who uh, try to unionize increase the work expectation, flag them because they can't meet them, and then they fire that person. Now you could say, well, why don't they go to another job? A lot of the people I worked with receive their work visa and are leaving horrible third world countries. I knew some people who were from Somalia working there. And I remember talking to them and I asked them, I said, hey, so if you're injured, 
are you allowed to move to another job? And they said, no, because it's either this or Somalia. So I either work injured at the factories in Amazon or I go back to Somalia. And so people like that, most people are working injured and cannot therefore meet that hyper productivity. Do I think Amazon should have both increase the $15 minimum wage and have hyper productivity as well? Yes, yes. And you might be thinking, well, they might not be able to meet such an intensive AA, what's the word I'm looking for? Such an financially intensive program. Jeff Bezos made 13.1, last I checked, $13.1 billion in roughly a month, the first month of COVID. Their federal tax rate was negative 1.8%. They got paid by the government. Amazon has a specific program where they get tax write-offs because they are giving their products to charity. What they're actually doing most of the time is there's products like say a detergent bottle, two detergent bottles wrapped in plastic to, kept together. The plastic breaks. Instead of selling that product individually, like an individual detergent bottle because the detergent bottle wasn't touched. They could sell that individually online. I know how to do it because I was one of the people who would code that into the, uh, their computer system. It takes 30 seconds. Instead, they said, no, throw that into a bin. We're going to use that as a tax write-off. Now, for legality purposes, I'm going to tell you that this is a, a made-up story that I, this is a, a completely fictional story and I'm making everything up and everything I'm telling is a complete lie because I don't want to get sued. These videos might only receive a few views on YouTube, but it is a part of a local television show in Oregon that receives roughly 400,000 views per episode. So take what I said with a grain of salt as if it's all made up. But what I would like is somebody to fight for everybody the injured person don't put this back onto the worker don't say hey maybe if they work harder they can get paid more i agree with that sentiment but i also think that people should be able to survive without food stamps personally i think i know the candidate who would be best for that job thank you